Eugene, what do you think it is that sets TikTok apart, that has differentiated it from Facebook, Instagram, Snap, Twitter? Yeah, the most fascinating thing about TikTok um, is the fact that unlike most of these other social apps, it doesn't rely on a social graph to build a personalized feed for you. It basically just observes you watching videos in its app and tries to understand your tastes based on your behavior. That's very different from Western social apps, which almost always have you start following and friending people before you start populating a feed. And I think what's innovative about TikTok is that they've recognized that what people really want is content that's interesting to them. Um, I refer to this as an interest graph. And they said, you know, it's, it's more efficient just to directly figure out what interests you rather than trying to guess what interests you based on what people you follow. So the big question is, will TikTok success and magic keep up? Will something bright and shiny, something else come along? Or will Instagram or another um, well-financed competitor somehow steal the momentum? What do you think? Well, I think it's going to be difficult for Western social apps to exactly replicate the magic of TikTok, partially because structurally and by design, as I said, those apps are built differently. And they also have just a lot of competing priorities uh, within their single feed, whereas TikTok is singularly focused on entertaining its users through its feed. The challenge for TikTok, I think, is whether it can continue to broaden out to a larger audience. I would say that the dominant audience for TikTok today is still sort of uh, on the younger side. And while that's great, I think their ambitions are to broaden into uh, an older audience. And that's going to be uh, a bit of a challenge because it means they're going to continue to have to diversify their content types. Shelly, do you think Given all the research that you've done over the last several months, do you think TikTok can broaden into an older audience? Absolutely. And we saw this during the pandemic. You know, these adults who had probably only seen their kids using TikTok start getting into TikTok food, uh, you know, cooking on TikTok, uh, investing on TikTok. Financial TikTok has been blowing up. Um, you know, all of these things kind of broaden the audience, get people addicted as TikTok then broadens into e-commerce, live events, streaming. You know, the thing about that TikTok has been able to do is continue to broaden its experience bigger and bigger and bigger and also to move with the person. So as Eugene was saying, you know, if you started on Facebook as a college student and all your friends were other college kids and then the people you see on your feed are not that interesting to you anymore. TikTok takes a totally different approach. It's constantly updating to what you're into, what you're addicted to, and continually and continually showing you what you want. As you change, the stuff you see changes. And so the interesting thing about, about that is that you're not seeing the same thing as your friend or your mom or your husband. And you're not seeing the same thing as you maybe saw a year ago. And so that's, that's really why you hear all these people who say, you know, when I first downloaded TikTok, I didn't really get it. And it was really weird. And they kept showing me all those pictures of people dancing. But by two weeks later, I was addicted. And that's because they get to know you. They know how you think. And that's the really kind of scary, but also quite amazing thing about it. Right. TikTok has brought so much joy to people over the years, but also there is this dark side. And Eugene, I wonder what your thoughts are on the problem of addiction, tech addiction or addiction to TikTok in particular, and also some of the, the content on the app, some of the memes that take off that are not healthy, that have plagued other social platforms. Yeah, it's definitely one of the chief challenges in this like sort of algorithmically feed driven age of social media, which is that the amplifying effects of the algorithm uh, can be both good and bad. You know, they can take positive content and really slingshot that, but they can also take negative feedback loops and negative sort of like human behavioral feedback loops and amplify those. I think that's one of the sort of like chief challenges coming out of what I refer to as the first era of social, which I think we're coming to the tail end of. I think the next era of social is, is going to be one in which both users and governments and society as a whole 
will will push back harder and demand more of these apps in terms of trying to mitigate some of this. I don't think it'll ever be completely eliminated because you know these feeds really reflect uh, us, like different sides of humanity, uh, both the positive and negative. But I do think you're going to see a more concerted effort to to be more aware of these things, and whether that's through human moderation or through other sort of like new social regulation features built into the app, try to keep it to a minimum. You know, we're going to be talking about TikTok all week, but Eugene, I'm curious, since this was an app that was born in China, the parent company is a, a Chinese company, how much do you think that matters today? Uh, will that at all hold TikTok back, or do users not know and or not care? Well, I think most users uh, so far are just reacting to whether the app entertains them. And so I, I think that political story is uh, less of an issue for them. I do think it will impact TikTok's future only in that, you know, the United States and China are entering into sort of a, a protracted uh, kind of cold war uh, on, on a number of fronts. And I think there's, uh, there's no way around it that TikTok and ByteDance, its parent company, are going to be caught a little bit in the middle of that. We've seen other companies already impacted. And, you know, as Shelley noted, certainly in 2020, TikTok got taken for a very turbulent ride because of that political dynamic. Uh, that's just, you know, part of the, uh, part of the challenge they're going to have to face.